Hi guys, today I figured I would start a mini series of sorts where I talk about tips and tricks that I use whenever I edit something like a podcast. So today we will start by talking about the strip silence function. So let's begin. So I was going to cover a few tips and tricks for podcast editing today, but I like to be thorough, so I decided to break these up into one technique per video. So anyway, I definitely won't be covering editing a podcast from beginning to end in this one video, but you should find this technique and the techniques in this series useful. And they should be useful not just for podcast editing, but also for editing things like voiceovers, ADR, and sometimes even for other non-vocal applications. For example, strip silence is often used as one of the first steps in drum editing. Also, at the end of this video, I'll leave you with a quick bonus editing tip that you might find useful for this type of work and can save you a load of time. So stick around. Okay, so the first thing I do when I get raw audio from a client or after we track for something like a podcast is I import my audio into Pro Tools, organize my tracks a bit, and then I consider whether to use strip silence. First of all, with this kind of work, especially with podcasts, you might notice that there are long sections of silence on each track. For example, the host of a podcast might be quiet for a bit while the guest responds to a question. The thing is, especially with things like podcasts, we often don't have any say in how the audio is recorded. Hosts often record phone calls or Skype calls with their guests, and both parties are often just recording in a random room in their own home. So I have a few things that I recommend to try to improve the audio, things like recording in their closet, making sure the windows are shut to prevent outside noise, and making sure they're wearing headphones so we don't get noise coming back into the mic from their computer. But there's still often a significant noise floor and outside interference. So you might find yourself wanting to edit out those sections of audio where someone isn't talking on a track. The way that I start that process is through the strip silence function in Pro Tools. So first what you want to do is highlight the section that needs to be stripped of silence. So I usually will do each track individually since the noise floor can vary between tracks, especially if it's something like podcast audio that wasn't tracked in a studio. Once you have your section highlighted, just hold Command and press the letter U or Control in the letter U if you're using a Windows computer. This will pull up the Strip Silence dialog window, where you can control the parameters of how the silence will be stripped. Here, you have options for the strip threshold, which tells you what decibel value will be considered the threshold to the silence, so anything below this decibel value will be considered silence and subject to removal. You also have an option for minimum strip duration, which sets a minimum value in milliseconds for how short the computer can make one of these clips that the Strip Silence function is separating out. Then you have the clip start pad and clip end pad values. These pad values look at where the quote unquote non-silence begins and ends as determined by your threshold value and adds a pad to those clips with sound that will remain on the timeline. So if your sound that won't be removed starts at a given point, let's say point A, and then you add a pad of 500 milliseconds using the clip start pad, then the beginning of the clip will be dragged out so that it rests along the timeline at point A minus 500 milliseconds. It doesn't change the location of the actual audio, but is rather just like dragging the beginning or the end of the clip out using the trim tool. So that's it. You can adjust the parameters in this window and you'll notice that you can see where the cuts will be placed and how your clips will look as you adjust the parameters. Once you have your parameters how you want them, you can choose to rename the clips that will be affected and created by the strip silence function. I don't usually do this, but I can see it being great for organizational purposes, so maybe I should start using it. Anyway, then you can choose to extract, separate, or strip. Extract will remove everything except the silence from the track. So you'll probably use this one less often, but it can be useful, for example, if you're having trouble finding a long enough segment of silence to get some room tone for a noise removal plugin. Just use Extract, push together all the segments of silence, and then you have a longer section of room tone. So that's Extract. You can also use Separate, which will just make breakpoints at each point defined by your parameters without deleting any audio. I don't use this one as much either, but it could be good if you're not totally confident in your parameters and settings for the strip silence. This way nothing is deleted, just separated into individual clips. So you can then easily go through and delete the silence or whatnot that you don't want. The one I usually use for this kind of work is strip. With the strip option, the clips of silence that have been separated out will be deleted. Okay, so that's all I have time for today. But as promised, I'm gonna give you one more editing tip that's good for this type of work. And it's super simple. Sometimes you might wanna start from the end of your session and work towards the front. 
If the client sends you the raw audio with a bunch of time code sections that they want removed, then you should definitely start from the end of the session. Otherwise, when you remove the first chunk that they want removed and you fill in the gap created, then all the audio after that will be shifted in time and the time code they gave you for the rest of the audio that needs to be removed will no longer be accurate. So next time you're editing, consider whether it makes more sense to start at the beginning of the session or at the end of the session. Sometimes one way is more efficient than the other. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And for today's question, I have a two-parter. And I want to know, what are your tips for editing podcasts? And what are your favorite podcasts to listen to? So please leave your answers in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, or subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday. And thanks for watching. Okay. Um, 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 um.